solvent effects on rates of reaction, many different fields, or extension to a transfer of other light particles, protons, hydride ions, and so on. It turned out that the theory and the basic ideas had applications to many areas of chemistry. And this was undoubtedly a factor in the uh, Nobel Committee's uh, choice. So let me summarize. Well, uh, I could go on briefly just to indicate, maybe I should do that first, uh, just to indicate uh, this is a, 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 an enzyme, and people have studied electron transfers and enzyme. Now there are many, many things. This is far more complicated than just a pair of ions in solution, but it's an example of something to which the theory has been applied. The transfer of an electron from one precise site, a certain site on this, um, uh, on this um, enzyme to another site and so on. So uh, this is an example of how things have changed from the 1940s when you worked with the simplest reaction in all of chemistry to far more complicated electron transfer reactions. This is an example of its application in the heart of how nature converts by the trees, by bacteria, how nature converts sunlight into useful forms of energy. And this is a membrane and this discusses uh, the details of collection of the light by various chlorophylls, transferring to a certain thing called the reaction center, and how an electron jumps from one to the other, and how, um, uh, how uh, uh, electron transfer theory can be applied. And in fact, one of the people of the conference, uh, Maria Elizabeth Mickle-Barley, was a pioneer in studying some of these things, and she and I wrote a paper in 1979 uh, on this subject and actually predicting one of the species that was not known to be where it was at the time, but that was an essential part of the theory. Uh, of course, nowadays there's a lot of interest in solar energy conversion by man-made solar cells and the idea is that you shine light on something, there's something that absorbs the light, it can transfer an electron, so electron transfers involved to so maybe some semiconductor nanoparticles, which are then connected to electrodes, and you convert solar energy to, um, uh, to electrical energy. And this is a field which is in terrific development today. I and mean, for example, in 2012, a whole new type of material, new for this field, was developed a perovskite for which has, shows much promise for the conversion of solar energy to electrical energy. The preceding 20 years fo focused on titanium dioxide and dyes on that and so on. And now there's this new development. Of course, it's very new, but uh, it's very exciting. So there are a number of different avenues towards solar energy conversion that play a role. And in all of these, an electron transfer occurs. And re we could perhaps remember that in the developing of the theory of electron transfer, it was first developed to try to explain experiments with the simplest type of electron transfer in chemistry. But then the principles that were developed could be adapted to far more complicated kinds of reactions. And of course, that's often the way science works. You don't necessarily start with the most complicated system and try to understand it. Sometimes you have to work with the most complicated system, especially if it's an engineering application. But if one's trying to understand things, then often you want to understand the principles first. And in understanding the principles first, you want to try to pick the simplest system. So you would need the fewest of postulates, types of postulates, to try to explain it. And I think that general procedure is illustrated by the developments in the electron transfer field. Well, such is the ongoing story of electron transfer. 
It's not something which was developed and stopped because these re reactions are a class of reactions that occur in so many places. So it will be with us certainly long after my lifetime and I'm sure long after the lifetime of every one of you in the audience. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Professor. Uh, my question lies associated with your presentation just made uh, on the electron transfer theory. Uh, in uh, when I observed in few slides, uh, I, I what I observed was uh, in most of the reactions which involved the radioactive isotope, the electron got transferred from a non-radioactive ion to a radioactive ion. And in one of the slide which you have mentioned uh, that uh, the before the reaction the Gibbs free energy was quite high and after the reaction the Gibbs free energy goes low. Uh, I, I just want a kind of